from uh, Bob's Leatherworks in Raleigh, North Carolina. And I've got another rig to show you. A couple of small things, but nevertheless something a little different. Some more information. This is the latest rig I've just completed. It has a walnut kind of a look about it. Uh, dark cinnamon, however you wanted to characterize it. I used uh, a lot ago that didn't have a lot of dye, if no, any dye in it at all, and when I wetted it was easy to work with as far as shaping the hammer thong. And then it dried up and it went back to its uh, lighter color. So it provides a nice contrast and it's a little stiffer and I think it'll last a little longer than some of the softer latigos that I've used in the past. This is a real thick holster, uh, completely lined with rawhide again. And one of the things I wanted to show you about how I make them is that I formed this holster with a old Vaquero. Not a new model Vaquero, but an old Ruger Vaquero that has a larger cylinder okay. and on top of that this is a 4 and 5 eighths and this rig is made for a 5 and a half inch gun so it is going to get a 5 and a half inch uh, Evil Roy which is a uh, a Uberti I believe and it's going to go down a lot lower by about a half an inch than the four and five eighths old model Vaquero. Now here is the cylinder size of my Uberti Peacemaker clone which is tuned to be an Evil Roy. So This one drops in there nice and easy. Take this one out of the shot and because the old Vaquero has a larger cylinder and the Uberti Peacemaker clone has a Colt sized cylinder which is a little less wide then it's going to have not as much retention but it has a sum and it's not wiggling around here past the rules and it will drop out of the holster. It was awkward on the video I know but it's hard to get a good shot with this stiff leather spinning things around. Get this out of the way. Let's try it again. There we go. So when it when this man gets his five and a half inch holster and he puts his five and a half inch gun in it, it'll have to work its way in, make its own little spot, and eventually it will do the same exact thing drop right out. And of course you can cock it while it's in the holster. There you go. There you go. All right. This is the classic rig when you order it from me without really adding anything at all extra like extra bullet loops. It comes with six right behind the gun And there's the hammer thong going on. And you can slide it where you want it, where it's most comfortable for you. Suede lined, okay. heavy duty, thick leather for the under loop for the Ranger collection. This is a connection. This is the badge holder that he ordered extra. And this is how things go together, just like that. And I'm not going to put this through and engage it because I don't want to put any marks on the billet. This is brass. He's got a brass Ranger Star Concho on his holster. Like that. There's that wax bullet loop deflector, which will save your leg from a burn if you fire a blank in or a, a uh, wax bullet excuse me not a blank or a blank but if you fire your wax bullet in here this will save you hopefully from a burn this is the snap out 
for the holster strap. Here is the sewing, which you really can't see, for the slide that's in here that's guiding the holster along the belt. Here's this gentleman's initials, LM, my stamp, and on this one here, let me slip this out of the way, there are this man's initials again, LM, on the buckle end of the belt. Badge holders again, they have a snap on the back, holding a Cowboy Fast Draw Action Badge, just like this one. If you're a SAS guy, you can use these badge holders for this, okay? For the, for, with these two holes right there. CFD badges have horizontal, SAS badges have vertical pins. So there it is. Okay. I get suede line. This suede matches this color pretty close, actually. You can see they're very much the same. Just happened to work out that way. Okay, the only rivets in this rig are the two that are holding this strip of leather, which is laced through the front surface piece of leather and riveted on. Then the second piece of leather goes on, and then the suede goes on last, and then it all gets edge sewn. So, there it is. A nice, rawhide lined, non-collapsing, cowboy fast draw action, zero retention holster. Okay. Let me see if you can see the slide ledge on this one again. There it is, right there. The light's hitting it perfect. And that's what keeps this holster right on the belt. Can't go up, can't go down. Okay, Nice, generous piece of the same material down here for your leg. It will soften up as you use it. So, right in there. Okay. Here you go. Cowboy, fast draw action holster, badge, ho uh, badge holder. It can be yours. If you want to find out more about how to get one, uh, look at the end titles. You'll see my email address and my phone number. Give me a call. Let me know what you'd like to have. I can make you one of these without this on here. I can put the rawhide in it, of course. I can make you SAS double rigs, single rigs, rigs without suede if you are looking for one just to wear around your property when you're out. Um, you don't want to get caught in the rain wearing a rig like this with this suede because this suede will pick up water and it will just turn really rotten. Trust me on this one. So you don't want to get really wet wearing a rig um, with suede on it. Leather, no problem. This is finished with Kiwi Neutral Shoe Polish, Wax Shoe Polish, so it provides a percentage of uh, waterproofing and you can polish it just like a pair of shoes and keep this look about it. Okay. And you can change your buckles too because these are Chicago screws. So buckles can be changed. So thanks for watching and give me a call again if you want to find out more about how to get a rig for yourself. And that's it. Bye-bye. Have a nice day.